It's that time of year. It's the Montane Lakeland 50 and 100 mile weekend. And as they did last year, they're running a virtual event in the week preceding the race. In this event, people can accrue the mileage based on the event over the course of the seven days. And it serves as a really nice warm up and introduction to the event. Now, for many who can't get entries, then this is a great way to feel part of the event and practice what it's like to accumulate that miles prior to the event taking place. Now, I can't be there in person, unfortunately, this year. So what I'll be doing is the virtual event. You may have seen some of my videos last year where I did the 100 miles in a week on a treadmill as a challenge. This year, I'll be outside hitting the roads doing the same. But I'm going to document my journey over the week, explaining my thinking, my rationale, my decision-making process around accumulating 100 miles in a week. It's a target many runners, many ultra runners look to do. And for most of us, it's not an easy accomplishment to accrue three-figure runs in, in a week. So um, this is the first one. I'd love your feedback on it. If you've got any experiences yourself of accumulating this sort of mileage in a week, then do comment below. Hope you enjoy the films. So my... Best advice, the first thing anyone should do when they're planning any sort of training week, but when they're pr planning a really big volume week, like 100, 105 miles, is sit down with a pen and paper or a whiteboard and think it through beforehand. Now, ordinarily, if I was in a training plan, something like Marathon de Saab, for example, I'd know what I'm doing weeks in advance and I could factor my week around it. I'm doing this as a bit of a fastball, so I have a slightly different way of looking at this. I have to think about my existing weekly commitments, work, family, life, and then fit my training in around it, which means it may not be optimal, but it's optimal for the week that I have laid out already. Now, fortunately, the first day is um, a Wednesday, and Wednesday is my admin day, my day I can play around with the most. So what I'm going to look at doing on this one is... Get a, break the back of it if I can. I'm going to go out for about six hours, steady pace, maybe take some walking poles if I need to, and try to get in somewhere in around 35, 40 miles. That will mean I've made a good chunk, like 35%, I think it is, of total distance will be done, and I'll feel like I'm on the way. But I have to be clever with this. I can't go too crazy on day one, because like I've said in the other video, I'm not in the best of shape prepared-wise to do a big mileage week. So I haven't the confidence or the competence right now, like I may have in the past, to hit it really hard on the first run. I don't know how my feet will stand up. I don't know how my sort of muscle groups will stand up without a base of training specifically for it before it. And then I'm going to deviate. Now, in a marathon to Saab week, when I'm looking at simulating race type formats, what I might do is do like 20 miles each day, five days consecutively, because that would simulate the race plan. I don't really have a race plan for this one. I'm not simulating something, so I'm trying to work my way to get through it. So thinking about my working day, family day on the Thursday and the Friday, then I feel I can get 20 miles a day in, but I'll break them into two runs. The plan will be 10 miles at lunchtime, 10 miles in the evening, both days. And then on the Saturday, a marathon effectively, a 27 mile hour for four to four and a half hours should get me home in those four days. But I need a contingency plan because I don't know how I'm going to react to this and how life will react to it. So what I've done is the fifth day, Sunday, will be penciled in as a contingency plan. There's two ways I may have to use that. I may need to lose some mileage on some of the days if I'm struggling to make it and then add it on to the fifth day. Or what I potentially might do is if I get through the first two days, OK, but feel like I'm a bit fatigued from it. Maybe I'll insert the, the Friday as a rest day. So day three will be a rest day. And then the Friday will shift down to day four and the Saturday will shift down to day five, Sunday. And I'll just have that little split in between. I'll suck it and see on the first couple of days and see how it feels. So, um, so that's the plan. That's how I always sit down and think about training plans at a macro level, but also at a micro level as well. So... Um, don't just get out there super keen to go out and go too hard with the best of intentions, full of excitement and sort of endeavour. And then one of two things happens. Either we risk not reaching the goal because we blow ourselves out or we get to the goal, but it's just not as much fun because we made it unrealistic. So that's the key thing for here is knowing where I am now. I can trust the confidence I've got in old me, my old athletic ability 
but I don't have the trust in me now because I've been hitting the bike quite a lot and not really been hitting the miles quite a lot. So, so that's the plan. Stay tuned for more videos. So run one of the Lakeland Virtual 100. I'm really excited actually. I'm more excited than I thought I'd be for this. Um, it's been a while since I've gone out and put a big day in, so I'm quite excited by it. The goal, as I mentioned in the previous video, is to get to 40 today, but ultimately I've got a, a boundary, a parameter of minimum of 30 up to 40 to make a big chunk and a big dent into that 100 miles or 105 miles. I've got the poles in case I need to break into a bit of walk running. And as you can see, I've chosen somewhere relatively nice and scenic to try and get this big run in. I'll let you know how I get on towards the end. So we've just passed 20 miles on day one. A um, couple of hot spots, a couple of little sore bits in the feet. You can just tell that I haven't done lots of miles for a while and some of those little hot spots and niggles are starting to, to pop up. So something I'm going to have to think about um, and manage through the week. Poles have come out mainly to conserve some energy and the legs a little bit up the hills. Um, I actually feel all right. Um, I just wanted to think of the next few days. So I think I'll push on to 35 today. It is hot. It's hotter than I thought. And plenty of fluids and feeling okay. But just conscious again that I need to replenish for tomorrow and the day after and the day after. Um, what I don't want to do is be a superhero today and then ruin myself or just not enjoy the, the next four or five days. So, um, so we're at 20 now and we'll get through to 35. Looking like it's going to be about a six hour day, something like that. Um, yeah, cool. I will check in another time. Good morning. It's day two. Um, feeling okay. Not, not too bad. Um, appropriately stiff and sore from yesterday. I think some of the hot spots I was feeling were more, um, just not used to being on my feet again for that length of time. There's no real sort of signs of anything worse developing blister wise. So that's good. Um, slept like a baby. Feel quite good, actually quite fresh. So today's 20 miles is split into two tens. It's really early. I'm not great in the mornings, but that's fine because I'm just looking at a slow sort of 10 miles this morning and then the same late afternoon. So um, I'm just about to head out now on the first 10 miler and let's see if I still feel fresh at the end of this. So that was actually really tough. Um, that was really, really warm and I felt that sort of cumulative fatigue kick in a little bit from sort of yesterday. Um, I, um, I've been back in a sort of 10, 15 minutes and I'm still sweating and feeling a bit fatigued. So it's really, I think it's good. It's 48 miles now, but um, concerned I'll need to be diligent through the day today to get ready for this afternoon's run. I feel uh, a little bit dehydrated and um, it's about managing myself back to be able to run not only 10 again tonight, but um, but be in the second half coming up as well. Coming to the end of the second run of day two, so two 10 milers, 20 in total, and now 58 overall for the week. Um, this morning, I, I struggled all day after the heat of that first run. It made me run faster than I wanted to, and I felt a little bit flat and tired and dehydrated all day. So I've done two things today on this second run. I found some shaded areas in a route that I know would be a little bit cooler and I slowed my pace down to sort of 11 minute mile in just, just to feel better. Now it's actually felt like a bit of a recovery run. So feeling good, but on the subject of recovery, check out some of the stuff I do between my runs to try and help me recover for the next few coming up. So let's talk about things like soft tissue work and recovery strategies beyond the stuff we've mentioned before. Now the thing with this stuff that's really important is this isn't magic fixes. These aren't things that will prevent injury or fix problems if you get them. What they are are things that can help, but there's bigger things to address. It's no point, and I've spoken at length about this on social media before. You can check out my videos on, on any of my social media platforms. There's plenty there that go through this sort of stuff. There's plenty of people that I work with who spend lots of time committing to things like foam rollers and stretching and other sort of treatment modalities. I'm not saying they're bad per se, but there's bigger things to think about. So if you're doing this stuff, but you're watching Netflix till two in the morning, your sleep's all over the place, you're not really um, just resting and recovering around your training, then these things become a little bit futile almost. It's, it's just small little things plugging massive holes. 
So get that stuff right first. I don't ordinarily advocate or do these myself on a regular basis, but what I do do is I pull them out at times of heavy training, racing, or during recovery, where I think I'll get most bang for my buck from them. Now, between work and family and all this running I'm doing this week, then it leaves me with little time to add other stuff on. So it's also imperative I think of the most important things I can target, the things I need to target the most. So I don't have any problems sort of waist up right now, I'm feeling great. Where I always get my problems are the hip flexors and the calves. So in little movement snacks or bite-sized chunks, half a dozen times a day for a few minutes, I might, I'm in the gym now, but I might be in the bedroom or the, the living room or in my office, I'll just be addressing some of those areas that I find I get stiff and sore in, okay? Now I might be doing some sort of mobility work like I'm doing here, it might be a stretch, it's whatever you think helps, okay? You might have some go-to ones that you want, or you may well outsource and go for a massage. I use massage really well at periods of heavy training and recovery because it helps me concentrate on, on the recovery side. Makes me feel like I'm doing something when my run or cycling or swim mileage is down. And I'll just spend five, six minutes at a time just working on these areas. Um, I might be coming down, doing a little bit of foam rolling on those calves. Might be giving myself some soft tissue work in there, okay? But the key thing with this, and again, there's much longer, more detailed videos about the me mechanisms of effect of this stuff. I know that I'm not breaking down scar tissue. I'm not releasing things that are stuck. It just feels nice. Without boring you, go and see those other videos if, if you're interested more. Without boring you with, with sort of physiology, all I know I am doing is modulating some of that pain, giving my nervous system a different stimulus, something to think about that's that's um, fundamentally different to, um, to what the pain is. Is it fixing anything? No. Is it helping me recover to get through the week? Absolutely, yes. Run one of day three. Still feeling quite good. Seem to be recovering quite well. I mentioned when I was chatting before I started about um, adaptability, planning your week. And the curveball, the expected curveball has happened. Um, schools broke up yesterday, Thursday, and I completely forgot that there was teacher training today and that the boys were over me and that I was on daddy daycare. So, quick re reshuffle. I wasn't planning on doing any treadmill sessions, but we've been outside, we've played, boys are tired. They're playing their tablets, watching telly and I'm going to have to plough through a few hours on the treadmill. So we're coming to the end of day three. Did the treadmill run this morning, which was my fourth run. And now this is my fifth run, another 10 miler, bringing the total to just under 80 miles. Um, something that's been going through my head on this particular session is that love-hate relationship that we all have with running or endurance sports at large. It can be such a fickle friend. Sometimes simple runs and short weeks can feel downright terrible. And other times you just hit the groove. And this week should have been really, really hard for me. I've not, not put in the base training for a 100 mile week, as I mentioned previously. But it's felt great. And this run in particular, I shouldn't be feeling this fresh or this light on my feet almost. I've, I've surprised myself through the week almost run grown into the runs um, and I'm quite confident for tomorrow but I'm sure you may find me chatting you tomorrow that the wheels have fallen off and I bloody hate running again and the 25 miles that are left will just be hell on earth. So here's an interesting topic that I've been emailed regularly about this week but semi-regularly for a number of months and years now about nutrition. I think it's something that we either fixate with or we pay lip service to and there's probably a happy medium in the middle. So people have asked me much about how I'm feeding, am I doing anything special this week? This week I'm not. Um, sometimes obviously if you're self-sufficient, if you've got a certain way the week's evolving and you need extra high calorie food or you need to carry your own food, that sort of stuff, then certain times the type of foods and the way you eat will be dictated to you differently 
but because of the way I'm breaking my runs down, then I'm able to eat and fuel normally, hydrate normally, got plenty of time between runs. So um, the key thing for me this week is to eat enough so that I don't under eat and I fuel my system for the week, but also to not overeat. I think it can be, we sometimes overestimate how much energy we do burn on some of these sessions. Of course, on that big day one, the 38 miler, then yeah, I burnt a few thousand calories. But on my five, 10 mile runs, then I'm not burning too much, even though cumulatively I am. And I'm not doing much around it during the day otherwise. So um, I'm fundamentally just trying to eat normally. Um, I am fortunate enough to be, when it comes to the recovery side, to be um, an ambassador and sponsored by Enhanced Recovery, which is a, an omega-3 recovery drink. I normally take that once, twice a week. I've upped it a little bit this week. But again, it's not a cheat or a replacement for eating well and drinking well. It can just supplement it if needed. And that's how I tend to do that. If my training spikes, I tend to have a bit more of them. If my training dips, I tend to back off from them. Um, and then the other question I get asked is about in-run nutrition. Now, again, similar to the, the thoughts I mentioned about how you'd navigate a event or, or a training week, depending where you are in the world, then it's the same. There's, there's no real benefit this week over a, an energy gel versus a bar versus solid foods for me. Depends on the runs. And some of my longer runs, then I've used um, carb drinks and I've uh, used plain water on other runs, on the shorter runs. I've had some solid foods when I've been doing walk runs or I'm stopping between runs. And on my shorter runs, some of them I've had nothing, you know, up, up to about 10 miles, I've had nothing, which and I normally wouldn't on a 10 miler. But particularly when I know that even though there's another 10 miler that day, I've got time to go and, and fuel. What I do use, again, I'm fortunate enough to be an ambassador and get sponsored by Mix Hydration. It's a really nice little um, two flavoured, um, two options of flavours carb drink that you mix it assimilates really well with me it doesn't bother me but plenty of other products work plenty of other products have worked for me in the past and will work for other people now so give it time and diligence and due diligence to uh, make sure we're doing it right to support your running and your, and your training but don't overthink it sometimes i think we we can absolutely get bogged down i've had people messaging me minutia questions about how i'm cooking certain things how i'm how much ratio of this to that I'm having. I don't even think about it, to be honest. I just eat well, rest well, recover well, and it should hopefully get me running well. Now, at other times I've worked with athletes as coach or physio, or myself as an athlete, where some of those fueling considerations are absolutely more imperative. So, um, so it's not a one size fits all as always. There are times that it is more specific and more appropriate to do more detailed preparation. Um, but this week, I've not needed to. Of course, if you were undertaking a week like this, then depending on yourself, whether you have uh, any dietary uh, needs or requirements that are different to the majority of people, whether you've got any conditions that may need specific issues addressing with your nutrition and hydration, then please do address those primarily. But otherwise, I think it's a bit of a eat what you want, relax, enjoy, make sure you're ready to go again. Good morning, it's day four or Saturday. Um, tired, feel fatigued now, which is just appropriately jaded, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, sleeping really well. Feel like I've got energy, just feel tired now. I needed to kickstart myself this morning with a bit of a coffee. So the plan is I'm gonna head in the little gym I've got on my garage to um, to get moving a little bit more, sit on the spin bike for 10 minutes, do some of that recovery and mobility work that you'd have seen earlier in the video. Um, and then the plan is 27, a marathon effectively to finish. I'm still hoping to get that done today, but there's a potential that I'll, because I'm, I coach kids football and we've got a match this morning, so it won't be till midday, middle of the sort of heat that I'll be going out for that. And I don't, don't know if I fancy four and a half hours of that today. So um, maybe it gets split into maybe, you know, 17, 18 today at a, a 10, 9 or 10 in the morning to finish off. We'll see. But, um, but we're nearly there. Well, it's so 13 Saturday in now, early afternoon. Um, as horrible as expected this as morning as watching kids football. So um, I'm feeling a little bit flat anyway going out. a bit out. of clever thinking but, and um, realised that. Just run um, six. 
I didn't want to be carrying big heavy packs. I'm actually not feeling too great about this one. I know so I how much this is going to hurt because it's so warm. That was me to um, stop off. So the aim is 18 home. to 20. Um, and then gives and me also 6 to 10 miles in the morning as you can see. Off, so, um, so actually, this is the first you one saw me on the big run, run one. Here we go. I down and shorten the planned distance. I think I'm going to push on a bit. I'm going to try and get 20 done. Um, I, I don't really want to. I want to finish it. I'm two and a bit hours in, but I think another hour, hour and a quarter, and I'll hit 20 miles. Purely just because that leaves me with a 10k, which feels psychologically nice to finish with tomorrow morning. Um, we got a family wedding anniversary, which is a, a big sort of four course meal type thing. So a little six mile an hour out in the morning to, um, to enjoy that. Helps if I go the right way. Um, a little 10 mile in the morning, sorry, 10k in the morning. We'll make that feel like a nice finisher before going in and enjoying some, some nice food and a recovery. So we'll push on. Um, remember you can adapt up and down when, you, when you're out and about. You don't have to be rigid all the time. And think of some clever tricks like looping runs so that you can carry a lighter pack um, and planning where you run to avoid some of the elements. See you at the end. And that's that, 20 miles. I've got about a quarter of a mile left to go. I'm just going to walk it in. I did enough a little bit there. Um, that's hot. That's the hottest one this week. It was horrible, to be honest. Um, it was about 26 degrees. And despite trying to navigate every bit of shade I could find, it was it was tough. Um, but we are 99 miles in. Um, just six to go to finish it all off. Looking forward to a nice cold drink when I get in. And I'll be back tomorrow with the last one. Good morning. It's day five, Sunday. Um, one to go. Um, feeling tired actually today. Sapped is the good word. Um, the heat more than the mileage yesterday really seemed to have uh, drained the last bit of the tank. So um, we've got 10k to go this morning. It's really early. It's about half past seven. I'm getting out while it's really cool. Um, to try and make this a bit more enjoyable. A couple more hot spots from the, the run yesterday, which um, seemed to magically appear at the end of the run when I got home and had a shower. But um, generally, a little bit tired, a little bit fatigued now. Legs are a bit sore. Um, but I'm glad I pushed to that extra couple of miles yesterday because suddenly 10 miles feels like, a, sorry, 10K feels like a real nice barrier to att attack today rather than 10 miles. So, um, we're off and we'll be back soon. Done. Nice little easy hour this morning. Um, felt okay. Just felt, I was looking forward to finishing, to be honest. So um, so that's it. I've just ended the last result. I've done um, 17.15, I think it was, which, funny enough, is like three or four minutes faster than last year's one that I did on the treadmill. So... Um, funny to be consistent without realistically coming from the same place starting so um reflections i'm glad i'm glad i did it glad i enjoyed it um be careful obviously if you're trying to do a big week like that off the cuff so to speak with um with relatively little prep um but as long as you're adjustable adaptable and realistic with it then it's achievable obviously i did it over five days and seven runs but you could have spread that out over the seven days and um, put some walks in and you could have done a walk a day and a run a day and accumulated your miles that way. Um, but yeah, enjoyed it. The results should be on. I think it's results based if anybody wants to track through how it all went. Um, I'm looking forward to a few days. Easy now. Um, that's the only problem really when you're not specifically targeting an event and you make a bit of a fastball decision to do something is obviously... Um, it's the fatigue afterwards so um take it easy for a couple of days i won't do nothing because um knowing me and my body i'll stiffen up and get a bit sore so i'll um 
I'll get the bike back out. Um, I'll get back in the gym and um, probably start looking at having a run early next week. Um, but yeah, hope you've enjoyed the vlog. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions or comments, then please do uh, message me privately or comment at the end of this. Um, happy to chat through anything that happened my end, um, if you've got any questions. But otherwise, to those guys and girls looking forward to the 50 and 100 without stopping next weekend, then have a fantastic race. It looks like it's going to be a warm one as well. But um, hope you'll all do really well. And I'll see you all soon.